All right, everyone, it's Monday night, and that means it's time for another church podcast. And again, if you're tuning in and you're not part of our church, I hope this still blesses you. But just know that I have an aim for our church. This isn't to get YouTube famous or something. This is just for the benefit of wanting to build up God's people, especially those who would call our church home their our church their church home. So with that, today's video is something that I think is often overlooked. Um, maybe not in our local church, but I think it's often overlooked in uh, broad evangelicalism, especially in our day with social media, with Instagram, with influencers, with YouTube. And that's why I say jokingly, I'm not trying to get YouTube famous because what's happened in our day and I, is I think that people have caught on to an idea, have latched on to an idea, a concept that says that you are only doing kingdom work, kingdom work. When you have a YouTube page that's popular, when you have a following, when you have a blog that's read by many, when you have, when you're traveling or you're doing mission trips or you're doing this, that, or the other, uh, basically it could all be summed up in what's your ministry? Uh, are you working for the kingdom or are you working outside the church? Are you doing something, quote unquote, they would never use these words, sacred, or are you doing something secular? Uh, I hear so many times of Christians saying, oh, yeah, I quit my secular job because I wanted to do something for the Lord. And I think, what? That's I mean, unless your secular job was something ungodly, like, you know, being, a, you know, a drug dealer or something. Then <laughs> otherwise, people need to get into their minds. Christians need to understand that if something that you're doing in quote unquote, I'm, I, I would never use this terminology, but in the secular world, whether it's accounting, whether it's a warehouse worker, a, uh, anything, a janitor, uh, a electric, an ele electrician, um, plumber, uh, lawyer, doctor, I'm trying to just cover all ranges here, uh, in and out worker, a Chick-fil-A worker, uh, whatever, from any spectrum of a job that is uh, that is honorable, a job that is uh, dignified, a job that's not uh, sinful, any of those jobs, that category of secular does not exist. That whole sacred secular divide actually comes from Roman Catholicism because they would create a distinction between the clergy and between the everyday Christian, between the those who held office and those who were laymen. That distinction was created by the Roman Catholic Church to say, actually, we are the church, not you guys. You guys are those that come and benefit from Mother Church, we being her officers, we being her clergymen, we, we being her leaders, but you actually aren't part of the church. And there's really two types of work. So says the Roman Catholic. There's sacred work, which is work for the ministry, which is uh, that which is doing things that externally look like they're specifically for uh, the, 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 the church. And then there's secular work, which is like a farmer, like tilling the land, like milking cows and so forth. Obviously I'm using older, um, vocations, blacksmith, a shoemaker, stuff like this, because that was what was being created. That false distinction by the Roman Catholic church. It really is rooted in Gnosticism. Uh, but uh, all that to say that the evangelical church of today has bought into it and uses similar language oh what's your ministry or what what are you doing for the for uh the church oh you have a secular job oh, okay i get it yeah yeah and then they create this false division and so when the puritans came they actually broke this down and they said this is not true they said all they they they, they developed a, a doctrine or a theology of vocation meaning of work, and there's the Protestant work ethic, the, the, the Puritan work ethic, which is actually interwoven into the fabric of our country. It's interwoven into Calvin's Geneva and in capitalism. That's all a Protestant idea because it's showing the beautiful reality of whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Don't worry about who the Christian watchmaker is. Uh, that's irrelevant, but what Christians should be doing is seeking to be the best watchmaker they could be because they're Christians. And here's where all this comes together because something as simple or as complex, I guess, as watchmaking is actually kingdom work. It's actually a ministry. It's actually something that is 
uh, work for the Lord. And so the Puritans came along and obviously I, I could spend, you know, a whole series doing uh, a series on the doctrine of vocation. But for this video specifically, the what I want to focus on is how the Puritans blurred those lines and said these distinction, these lines in the sand between sacred and secular, between kingdom work and non-kingdom work do not exist because whatever you do, whether you eat or you drink, Whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God, meaning God can receive glory from eating and drinking and God can receive glory from your vocation. So the Puritan said, while something like eldership or something like being a deacon is a very high calling and it's beautiful and, and, and it has requirements and it needs to be officiated by the church and ordained by the church, while that's true in one sense, it, it, it's 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 not to say that that calling is more honorable than that of a fisherman than that of a farmer and so the puritan said yes this office of a pastor elder of deacon yes this often require uh, this this office requires its own ordination its own qualifications and there's a there's a, a, a steps to getting to that office yes but there's also steps in getting into this office no, it's not a church position, but you got to know how to milk a cow if you're going to be a dairy farmer. You got to know how cows work. So there's also qualifications from here. So what they wanted to show was these are just two different vocations that both bring glory to God. And so what I'm trying to develop in this video is to create that, to, to get rid of, to destroy that false uh, narrative that there's sacred and secular, there's kingdom work and non-kingdom work. Uh, they're... Uh, I could say that someone might not be doing all things to the glory of God. Therefore, it's not kingdom work. But inherently, in and of itself, it's not automatically not kingdom work because it's not a church position or it's not going out on, you know, on a missionary trips or being a pastor or something like that. So that's the groundwork. That's what I'm trying to lay out. And it's all rooted in. In, you know, Colossians 3 and um, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 and Ephesians 5, where it talks about the, the beauty of of being able to work to the glory of God, to do things wholeheartedly for Him because we work for Him. And so it actually dignifies all work. So all that to say, what my next layer is in this video is God often uses very ordinary things, so much so that there's something called the ordinary means of grace. Those means of grace are extraordinary, the truest sense of the term. But this word is just saying that there's channels that we receive grace that are ordinary that are routine like preaching prayer fellowship the lord's day baptism lord's supper when we do those things we're we're putting ourselves in the means of grace we're receiving grace by those things and they're ordinary they're routine bible reading it's routine preaching it's weekly it's routine the lord's supper is routine all these things the lord's the lord's day it's every lord's day fellowship should be happening all the time these ordinary things provide for us means of grace and these things again they seem ordinary because they're routine but they're anything but that so we see that god using ordinary routine things to provide grace god also sent his son in a very uh, extraordinary way yes by being conceived by the by the holy spirit in the virgin mary but his life is very ordinary born in an ordinary place actually a lowly humble place born of an ordinary family born in an ordinary town born and had ordinary parents yes we know that his generation from the father was miraculous and immaculate yes but in in the external sense what people could see was very ordinary in fact for 30 years of his life, before his public ministry, his life was super ordinary. He was the son of a carpenter. He was from Nazareth. Ordinary, 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 ordinary. Why am I saying this word so much? Is because Christians have bought into this lie that unless you're doing something public and spectacular and out there for the world to see, unless you have this ministry going, unless you're doing this on this mission trip, unless your your life is out there doing some sort of kingdom work, then your life is actually not that valuable nor useful to the kingdom of God. And I want to say no, no, that is incorrect. And that's actually why Christians have lost a sense of purpose. That's actually why 
95% of Christians feel as though their life is meaningless. That's actually why 95% of Christians feel as though they have nothing to contribute to the kingdom. It's because they've been lied to to believe that they must be doing these crazy, crazy things out there in social media world and putting their life on display saying, look at me, look at all I'm doing, look at my life. This is my ministry. This is my kingdom work. Da, 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 da. I left my secular job to do this sacred job. Look at me. No, no. So this is what I want to say. Doing crazy things for the Lord in a very external sense that has a title tied to it, like pastor, missionary, or something like that. Yes, that is kingdom work, but it's not the only kingdom work. That's not the only work that can glorify God. That's not the only beautiful thing. So I'm titling this whole video, Glory in the Mundane or Glory in the Ordinary because of 1 Corinthians 10, 31, because of all of that I said, we need to see that God often works in very ordinary things. Christ was an externally an ordinary person. Like I said, for 30 years of his life, not much going on other than honoring his father, honoring, honoring his mother, being a good sibling, honoring his true heavenly father, being the best carpenter he could be, doing all things to the glory of God, not falling short once. And he comes onto the scene and God says, behold, my son in whom I am well pleased. His first scene on ministry is God receiving him and saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. 30 years of quote unquote ordinary life. And that's how God the father receives him. So church, be encouraged that God is not despising your ordinary mundane mundane monday through saturday life god see you know we as i said last time don't despise the days of small things we are people that want that overnight 50 minutes of fame we're people who would who have been bred in a culture that says revival needs to hit tomorrow it needs to be x amount of people it needs to be a giant revival and in you know and i want that i want that i want a mass revival yes of course yes i want the gospel to spread like wildfire yes 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 but god does not often work like that god often works generationally god often works with legacies being built god often works with a seed being planted that we might never see blossom god is often working in the glorious mundane day-to-day -day life where we are loving christ daily where we're feasting upon christ daily when we're reading the word where we're repenting where we're finding grace that alone is a miracle for sinners sinners who were once dead to worship christ that's a miracle and god is saying yes it begins there with the worship of christ and from there love your spouse another miracle from there have children and raise them in the lord another miracle from there go to church build a community find christ uh christ's body as beautiful and you have all these people from all these backgrounds all these different uh uh, upbringings and 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 families and and all that all these people coming together in fellowship in one accord praising the king of kings that's a miracle and god is working in those things he's working in the otherwise mundane things that are actually not mundane they're actually miraculous that dead sinners will be brought to life to worship christ to sing his praises to gather with the saints to make fellowship and, and strong communities to actually enjoy one another which otherwise we wouldn't and then from there from the worship of christ in private to the worship of christ in the corporate gathering of the saints the worship of christ in the public square in the marketplace by being a good employee because we know it's coming up to him it's glorifying him it's rising up as worship to him to being a good churchman outside the church visiting others hanging out with others to being good a, a good um citizen in our societies that's where god is working as we raise our families as we build communities as we seek to establish the christian uh ethos and the christian society where we are at and, and expand uh, expand that kingdom that's how God often does it. It's by be people being faithful to the ordinary daily things that God has set before us and living lives of intentionality in the day to day in the teaching of our children, the ABC, so that way they can learn the gospel. So that we, we can teach our children to apply the Lordship to all of life. Church, there is no sacred secular divide. All things, when done for His glory, is kingdom work. So don't be, buy into that lie and live lives that are powerful, 
lives that are full of meaning, lives that are dignified, lives that are kingdom work because you're doing it under the banner of Christ's Lordship, teaching your heart, the heart of those around you, and the hearts of the society to live under the Lordship of Christ because He's Lord over it all. Glory in the Medain and take every single day as an opportunity to bring your king glory and to expand and extend the kingdom to the ends of the earth. I pray that you're blessed by that, dear church.